Now, the idea of a layered cake isn't new. It can be found right across America. One of the dishes that I'd used for inspiration from this, particularly with the layers, is a dish that I learned from Paris. And it's a twist on a classic French dessert called a gâteau opera. Now, the basis of this cake is quite unusual. You actually start off with a meringue base. So we need eight egg whites. And it's this that gives the cake unique lightness. A touch of cream of tartar. This will stabilize the meringue a little bit and then whisk this up. Now, there's one thing you need to make sure of when you make a meringue is the bowl is free of grease. Anything like the bowl is not absolutely spotlessly clean, then it affects the whole quality of the meringue dissolves the whites and breaks down the whites and causes it to collapse. Now, at this point, just as the whites start to firm up, we can add some of our sugar. When your egg whites are whipped, leave them to one side. In a separate bowl, start your sponge by creaming the butter and sugar. A good pinch of salt. But the key to this, because you've got the layers in there, is to keep it nice and light. And if you make a sponge like this, it really does keep it light. Now, there are quite a lot of eggs that are going to go in here. We need eight medium-sized eggs, just added one at a time to the butter and the sugar. And then we've got this quite loose batter. But then if we add our almonds and then plain flour, the only rising agent that we've got in here is the meringue. This is where you need to be really careful with this. We then fold this in. Then you can incorporate the meringue. It's quite an unusual way of making a cake, but you do get a really light texture to it. Now, traditionally, this would be then baked on flat sheets, but I'm actually baking it into a whole tin. So this is about an eight inch cake tin. We fill it up with the batter. The oven's set about 360 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 180 degrees centigrade, gas mark four, and cook this now for about 45 minutes. And while that's cooking, we can make our filling. So it's whipped cream and it's chestnut puree. And the thing is with chestnut purees, when you're buying this, make sure you buy the sweet one, because they have two on the supermarket shelves at the same time. The sweet and the unsweetened. The sweet goes in here. We just carefully fold it in to whipped cream. That can go in the fridge just to set until our cake's ready. And this is the finished cake. It's nice and light, but what it will do is enable you to slice it nice and thin. And it's these layers that we want. Because of the meringue in there, you've got a weird, unique texture to it. It enables you to bend it and handle it a lot easier than a traditional cake. Now, traditionally in France, this would be coated in like a coffee syrup, but I'm gonna use rum, a good measure of rum, but not on its own. You mix rum and stock syrup together. Stock syrup is a mixture of sugar and water. And in this cake, it keeps each layer moist and helps bind it together. Spread your chilled cream filling over each individual layer. The secret of this is to get the filling nice and thin. The temptation is to get it a bit too thick. And then your cake ends up being about a foot tall. Finally, you've got the top. And now onto the best bit the chocolate fudge topping, where you add water and sugar into a pan. Now, I always use sort of ice and sugar for this, but you could, of course, use caster sugar. Add chocolate and cocoa powder and stir continuously on a low heat. This is where you don't want to use too bitter chocolate, about 70% dark chocolate. But you get this lovely shine to it. And to top it all off, decorate your cake with some crumbled candied chestnuts. But there we have it, a simple chocolate and chestnut fudge cake.
This cake is worth the effort and perseverance because although it looks like one solid bit of cake, it's the layers that make this so special. So persevere with it. It is really worth it because the taste is fantastic.